Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this video we're going to be delving in into EQ and compression and things along those lines to see how we can make sure that our kick drum and our bass drum work together effectively in our overall mix. This is something that causes a problem for lots of people and I was recently sent an email asking that very question it kind of prompted me to create this video. So I'm going to show you two methods of going through and making sure that you balance both your kick drum and your bass to make sure they don't overlap and muddy up those low end frequencies. So let's take a look at those two methods right now. Okay, so for this first method I'm going to show you, it's going to involve compression. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the compressor and we're going to set up the compressor on the bass to ensure that every time the kick comes in, it's going to drop or compress the bass frequency to allow that kick drum to come in and show through. So that's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is open up the compressor. So at the moment I've got a full track on here, but all I've done is I've used the track control or the track manager to go through and hide all the instruments and the bits and pieces that I don't need just to free up my layout so it makes it nice and simple and clean. So first thing, let's go and create a instance of a compressor. So we're going to use this on the bass master because it's the easiest one to use it on because that applies to all the tracks of the bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and create another instance of the compressor. Now I've compressed the audio signal to give me the compression across the board for the bass to smooth that out. But I'm going to use this compressor specifically for working with the ducking sort of process. So let's just go in and add another instance. So let's just add in another recomp. We'll put that at the end of the signal chain for now. And what we're going to do is we need to set a couple of parameters up on here, first of all, before we can do anything. First thing I want to do is make sure that it uses the kick drum as the trigger. So to do that, I'm going to come to the I.O. on my kick, and I'm going to simply drag that over onto the instance of the compressor that we're using. That will then set up the send and receive, and you can see it's sending from audio channels 1 and 2 and output into 3 and 4, which is exactly what I need. If you want more details on how to do this ducking uh, process, there's a video which I'll link in the card in the top right-hand corner, and it'll also be in the description below. So you can go and take a look at that video. It gives you a lot more detail than I'm going to cover in this instance. So we've created that instance now. We need to do one more thing. We need to tell it that we want the detector input to use the auxiliary input left and right. So that's going to use the track, the kick track, to specifically trigger the compressor. So with that set up, the next thing we need to do now is just go through and key in the settings we want to use to start off with. Now for this example, I'm just going to solo out the kick drum a second. And I'm just going to bring in some compression and we're going to just put a ratio, an arbitrary ratio in there. I'm not bothered where it is, I just want to show you. So if you take a look at this meter now, when the kick drum starts kicking in, you'll see that will peak based upon the kick drum triggering it. So there you go, you can see now the kick drum is the trigger to cause the compression. We now just need to configure the compression on the bass to be exactly what we want. So now if I pull back in the bass track, let's mute out the kick drum and just solo the bass track. So we'll now hear any kind of ducking that goes on so we can fine tune and kind of get it where we want without the annoyance of the kick drum overriding. So you should be able to hear there every time that kick drum comes in, even though you can't hear it, you can see on the peak meter, you can hear that duck, that dip in the volume through the compressor compressing it. Now obviously that's a little bit overkill for what we want on there. We want to sort of fine tune it a little bit better. So we can tweak the threshold to dictate exactly when that compressor comes in and kicks in. And then we can use the attack, the release and the ratio to control how much compression is applied and how quick the attack, in other words, how quick the compressor kicks in and the release, how quick the compressor lets the signal, the original source signal, go back to its original level with, in other words, release the compression. So we can just use that now to fine tune things. Let's put the kick back on. So we just unsolo that and let's take a listen and we can fine tune and tweak.
Now, obviously, what I'm doing here is just for demonstration purposes. We're not listening to the entire track. We're only listening to the, the bass drum and the bass guitar together in exclusion. So we're not really getting the full overall mix. So obviously, you need to go back in and listen to this in an overall mix to see how your kick drum kicks through. But that really is the first method. It's not particularly complicated. It's just you got to go through now and get it to sit exactly what you want so you don't hear that ducking going on too much but it's there to give the kick drum the space to kick through and show, sort of show through in your mix so that's the first method the second method we're going to look at is how we can use EQ to deal with this buildup of frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some subtractive and additive EQ to allow the different frequencies that we want to be more prominent to shine through, and the ones we want to cut back on, we'll just look at dipping those out. So let's go through and take a look at what I've done. I've created two separate instances of the EQ. I'm just using re-EQ, which is the stock EQ with Reaper. So we've got one on the bass master track to deal with all of the bass, and we've got one on the kick drum for this example. Now, obviously, when you come to dealing with drums, you may have a different EQ for each one of the kit pieces. So, for example, your snare is going to have different frequencies to what your kick drum is. So it makes more sense to separate those out and use the different EQs to work with the different instruments. So let's just open these two instances up. What we're going to do is open it, the EQ on both of those. So we just got standard EQ on there, nothing set at the moment. So we're going to start off with those low end frequencies. So what we're going to do is take a look. We're just going to kick the bass in and the drums in. We'll see what frequencies are actually being displayed on there. And that'll give us a good starting point. So by using the visual representation inside each one of those EQs, I can see that we need to start dealing with the frequencies around 200 hertz and lower. That's kind of where the bass and the kick drum really are starting to compete with each other. So what I'm going to do in this example is I want the kick drum to sort of shine through a little bit better, so we're going to pull back on the bass a little bit. So let's start off by setting the range that we want to work with in the kick drum. So this is going to be where the boost is going to come in. So I want this to sit, we're going to start around 200 hertz. So I'm going to take the frequency over to around 200 that's looking pretty good we're going to bring the bandwidth down fairly low because I want to create a nice quick curve I want a quick cut on this and we're going to use a low shelf I'm going to drop this down by about 7 dB as a starting point obviously you can tweak and adjust this to get the mix that you want with your particular piece of audio but that's looking pretty good and I've done it the opposite way to what I want I want a 7 dB boost on there not a 7 dB cut some point I will get this right. Okay, so we've got the boost in there. Now I'm going to do exactly the opposite inside the bass. So we're going to use the same frequency. So pretty much 200. Let's just get that where I want it to be. There we go. That'll pretty much do. And we want a 7 dB cut. So let's do the same again on there. Take it down to 7 dB. And we want the bandwidth to be the same as well. So we want a nice smooth cue on there. And that's looking pretty good. That's where we want it to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the track back and we're going to take a listen. I'll A, B it. Now this isn't going to be something that's night and day. This is just something that's going to be subtle that allows the kick drum to shine through. You can adjust this more or less to, to your sort of own taste to make sure it balances up with your track. But let's have a listen to it now where we've got that. And I'll A, B it. I'll enable and disable both of those EQs so you can kind of get a flavor for what's going on. is we've cut the bass considerably 7 db of bass cut there and a 7 db boost on the kick drum now we've used a low shelf in this example you don't have to use a low shelf you could easily if you find this is just a little bit too much of your bass is being taken out you could easily swap this over to be a band and exactly the same then for the kick drum we say a band on there and then you can scoop through the frequencies to find the best place for where that kick drum is sitting just to make sure you don't cut all the low end frequencies you just make that space for the kick drum to shine through like i say there's no right or wrong to this it's just different methods of achieving the same end result 
Well, anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how you can adjust the EQ in your subtractive and additive EQ to allow various frequencies to shine through in your mixes. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. And if you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.